Hello, welcome to a new episode of the Knitted by Whitney podcast. I know I'm coming to you very quickly after my last podcast, and that's because I have finished a new item. I teased this a little bit in my last video, but I have officially finished my Augustine's number 21 sweater dress, and I'm very excited to talk about this. And I have a few little surprises to tell you in today's video. Um, I have some lovely lighting right now because we got walloped with another snowstorm here in Nova Scotia. This is our third one in three weeks, and I think this one was the biggest. So we have lots of sunlight that's all being reflected off of a fully snow covered ground. So it's just beautiful light coming into my living room here today. I'm in the same spot that I was in last episode because I found that I really liked it. Um, but I have zoomed in a bit because I've had some people say that they find it hard to see what I show and what I talk about. So I thought I'd bring you in a little closer, see how that works. Um, as always, give me some feedback in the comments, whether you like this or would prefer a little further back. Um, but hello, welcome. Let's start off today's episode with the mug of the episode. Now, I'm very excited to show off this mug because I've been waiting to show off this mug for several months. <laughs> I bought this mug back in either August or September, but I bought a matching one, well, coordinating more than a matching one, for one of my friends to give to her for Christmas. And we only just exchanged our Christmas gifts and opened them up yesterday. <laughs> Um, partly because of COVID, partly because of us both being busy over the holidays. Um, but I had given her her gift and we opened them up over a video chat so she could see what it was because I bought her a mug similar to mine and I didn't want to do an earlier episode showing off my mug because then she'd say, oh my gosh, I love your mug. Where can I get it? And I wouldn't be able to keep the secret that I got it for you for Christmas. Um, but anyway, I am using this adorable ball of yarn mug that says, I like big balls and I cannot lie because I cannot lie. Cheers. Today I'm just drinking my usual chai that I like. Um, I actually first found about, about these mugs. They come in three different colors with three different sayings. I bought the pink one for my friend and hers says, knitting keeps me from unraveling. And I first saw these mugs when I started watching uh, This Annie Knits, Lucy's podcast. And I wanted one ever since then. So I've been hanging onto these since the summertime. Um, but now my friend has opened hers up. She absolutely loved it, just like I thought. And I can share mine too. So very excited about that. Now, before I get into talking about this beautiful sweater dress, I have a really fun surprise for everyone. I teased this a little bit on my Instagram, so if you've seen my Instagram, you might know, but I am doing my first ever giveaway on the Knitted by Whitney podcast, and I'm so excited about it. Um, Laura of Penrose Knits reached out to me after she saw my review of her school run headband, which is this right here. And she absolutely loved my review and offered to give me a copy of her pattern to give away to one of my viewers. But that's not the only surprise. I was away over the past couple of days in another part of Nova Scotia and I went to my favorite local yarn store and I picked up some yarn that you can use to make this pattern. This yarn is by Felice Artist, which I've talked about as one of my favorite Nova Scotia branded yarns. And it's a DK yarn in their color, Nova Scotia. This is a stunning blend of blue and green and teal and a yellowish green and it's just so beautiful it's definitely one of their most popular colors they have ever made so it is their front country dk 
and this skein is 240 yards, 125 grams. So there is plenty to make one of Laura's school run headbands. Or if you decide you don't want to use the yarn for the school run headband, that's perfectly fine. But I am going to be giving away the pattern to the school run headband and the skein of yarn to one of my lucky viewers. Now, the only thing that you need to do for this is first of all, you have to be subscribed to my YouTube channel, which is Knitted by Whitney, and you have to comment on this post. Doesn't matter what you comment, I would just like to see a comment from you. Uh, you can tell me what you liked about this episode, you can tell me um, what you're knitting, anything you're working on, um, whatever you would like, and you'll be entered to win the pattern and the skein of yarn. Now, I will do my best to get those to you as soon as I choose a winner, but of course, you know, if you live quite far from me, it might take a while in the mail. Um, the pattern will be digital, so you can get that much earlier than you'll be able to get the yarn. <laughs> but I'm very, very excited to be doing my first ever giveaway. Um, Laura was super, super sweet and generous to uh, gift a copy of her pattern and it's an awesome pattern as you know I talked about in my last video so I'm super excited to share that with everybody. So you can comment on this video up until I release my next video. That is the length of time that I'll give you to comment to enter the giveaway. Um, it's my first time doing a giveaway on my YouTube channel, so I'm gonna be learning as I go. So if I make mistakes, I apologize. I'm gonna try and make it as seamless as possible and make it as easy as possible. And give everyone a really long time to comment and get in on the giveaway because I know not everybody watches my videos as soon as they release. Some people see them later on and I don't want to then exclude those people from getting into the giveaway. So um, I can't say when, my next video is going to be, um, but I do know I'm going to be starting a new project soon and I won't have a new video until I have finished that project. So um, it'll definitely be a couple weeks, um, but it probably won't be as quickly as this video is following my last video. So you'll have a bit more time than I gave in between videos this time. But anyway, I hope you are as just excited about the giveaway as I am and now let's head on into talking about the Augustine's number 21 dress. I mentioned this on my Instagram and I might have mentioned it in my bonus episode about what I plan to make in 2022. I mentioned that I was hesitant to make an Augustine's pattern because I have never seen or have seen very, very few plus size makers knit up her designs. They're very bold designs. They're usually quite structured. They're um, quite voluminous, very large, poofy sleeved, um, that kind of a style, very, that kind of aesthetic, uh, very feminine, very lovely details, but I haven't seen very many plus size people making them. So that was the same issue with this design. So I was hesitant at first to make this design because there were no plus size testers that shared their photos either on Ravelry or on Instagram. And no other plus size makers had made this that I could find on Ravelry or Instagram. Um, I didn't really search anywhere else because those are the two main places that I find um, knitwear patterns and um, other examples of the knitwear. So I didn't really look further afield than that. Uh, I was nervous about making this because I hadn't seen someone else my size make it. And you really don't want to start a large project such as a sweater dress and realize when you get to the end, oh no, that doesn't look good on me. Fortunately, that didn't happen with this one. Um, I did make some key choices that probably helped. Um, I actually knit a size smaller than the intended size for my bust size because the pattern was designed with 10 centimeters of positive ease. That's four inches of positive ease. And when I looked at the, the design on the designer, 
with the proper 10 centimeters of positive ease. It just looked way too loose for me to feel comfortable in with my size and with my style. So I knit size E in this pattern, which I think was 110 centimeters for the bust size. I'll put that down below so you can see. Um, but that is a size smaller than the designer indicated for my bust size because I didn't want to have the 10 inches, the 10 centimeters of positive ease. I felt that that wouldn't look as nice on me as having zero ease. Um, so that worked out great for me. Um, I really love the fit of this dress. It is one of the most comfortable things that I have ever knit for myself. And I posted um, in my posts on Instagram that I could equally see myself lounging on the couch in this or going off on a really nice date night with my fiance. Um, and someone said, oh, I have to disagree. You shouldn't be lounging on the couch in that. That is an going out kind of dress only. <laughs> so I had to laugh at that, but it's kind of hard to not lounge on the couch in this because it's so comfortable. Um, I think it's due to the fact that it's a loose gauge. Um, you're supposed to use size US 15 needles, which are huge. Um, and you're supposed to use a strand of worsted weight yarn and a strand of mohair held together. Now I made different choices. I think I mentioned in the video where I talked about knitting this dress that I wanted to use some yarn that I've had in my stash for quite a few years. I bought some yarn from a store in, Mar in Maine called Martin's and I got the yarn, which was a worsted weight acrylic for $2.50 a ball, which is crazy. Um, and I bought enough of it that I could make a sweater dress. And that's what I chose to knit with this. So um, I wasn't following the pattern exactly. So keep that in mind if you wanna make this for yourself. I was using worsted weight yarn instead of worsted plus mohair. And instead of using size 15 needles, I used size 11. Now that wasn't actually intentional. I, am, I intended to use size 13 needles. So I intended to only go down one size. Um, because I did a gauge swatch with US 15s and I could see right through it, way too loose, way too holy. It wouldn't have been a great fit for me. I wouldn't have liked the drape of the material. So then I swatched with 13s and I really liked it with 13s. It was much better. Um, however, my 13s were on a fixed circular. I didn't have a smaller, um, version of them and I didn't have DPNs for them. Not that I would have used that because I don't like using DPNs. Um, so I ordered some needles from a local yarn store to me and unbeknowingly to me, I ordered 11s instead of 13s. But now I have a pair of interchangeable needles that are size 11 that are metal. And my previous ones were just lacquered wood and I've sort of been transitioning to metal needles because I prefer the glide much more. When I was a beginner knitter, I didn't like metal needles because my stitches would slip off so much and I would lose stitches and it was very, hard to work with. So that's why I found wooden needles and I preferred them as a beginner knitter. Now that I'm a more intermediate advanced knitter, I prefer to have the slickness of the metal needles so I can go faster. Um, so yeah, I ordered the wrong size needle and didn't notice until I was partly done the yoke. And I realized, wait a second, these aren't 13s, these are 11s, oh my goodness. But I tried it on and it fit very nicely. It was still very comfortable. Um, I didn't find it too tight. Um, my gauge is smaller than the pattern indicated. So I've knit, let's keep track here. I've knit with smaller yarn, smaller needles, and smaller gauge than the pattern indicated. So what it looks like on me is not what it's gonna look like on somebody following my size with the recommended yarn and the recommended needles in the recommended size. So keep that all in mind about how my dress looks on me versus what you want yours to look like. So despite all of these sort of hiccups from the beginning, the dress ended up being a success and I'm super happy with it. Of course, there's some 
drawbacks that I have, um, but I'll get into those now and we'll sort of, and I'll sort of like talk out what was good, what worked and what didn't, mistakes, that kind of thing. So I'm going to start from the top up. One of the things that kind of bothers me about this dress, you can probably pick it out right away, is this little poof happening right beneath my neckline. So when you start the dress, you don't do the finished hem first, you just start knitting. I don't want to tell you too much about it because it is a paid pattern, um, but you then do your neckline later on. And I found with the unfinished edge, it fit very nicely. It was a little wider along my neck and shoulders and it fit very nicely. Once I did the finished hem, it got tighter, which for, I'm thinking this is going to be like a fall winter dress. Not that bad because it's gonna keep my neck nice and toasty, but it causes this weird little poof, I guess is what I would call it, because the number of stitches of the body doesn't stretch out as nicely and lay smooth once you add on this finished neckline. So it's a little nitpicky. It's not the end of the world, of course, but it's a little something that annoys me about the dress. Now onto something super positive slash little iffy is these adorable little puff sleeves. Um, my previous experience with knitting garments that have puff sleeves, I've done one bottom up and it worked out great. And I did one from top down and it was probably one of the worst fitting garments I've ever made for myself. It was a test knit and I ended up just frogging it afterwards once I'd submitted pictures to the designer. Um, but I found that it just didn't suit me at all. It could have been a mix of the pattern instructions with being a test knit where the designer is trying to finesse the design, that type of thing. But I just found that it didn't work for me. And I was kind of, that kind of made me a little nervous going into this pattern because I knew it was top down and it had puff sleeves. And I thought, am I going to encounter the same problems that I encountered before? But this was a completely different construction than the previous pattern that I had done. And this is so, so smart. If you do buy this pattern and you find out how this is done, oh my gosh, it's a light bulb moment. I didn't think that it would be that simple to create a puff sleeve and it's so perfect. So it's just a little gentle poof. It's not like a big 1980s style poof. And that really works for me because I'm self-conscious about my shoulders a little bit. I feel like I have like really big quarterback on the football team kind of shoulders. And I find having a nice gentle poof is all that I need. I don't need anything big and exaggerated. And the only drawback of the way that this poof is made is that it means that you get a really large um, sort of armpit area. And I can feel the skin of my arms touching the skin of my body. And it just makes things a little sweaty. That's the only sort of drawback to this, to this design right there. But otherwise, I love the effect of the little poof. And if I need to, I can always wear a long sleeve shirt underneath this and not have the skin to skin sweat situation. <laughs> um, moving on down, these lovely puffed sleeves with this beautiful lace design. It is kind of hard to tell um, what the lace design is in this yarn because it is a Tweety yarn. I didn't realize that um, until I was knitting it and I knew I wanted to use this yarn for the pattern. So it's just a, a happy accident and I just have to deal with it. Um, Something that I'm not so happy about having to deal with though is that these sleeves are short. I did follow the pattern exactly and I stopped knitting my stockinette. I put in a lifeline, then I did the lace section and I bound off and I tried it on and it was a little short but then I blocked it and it was longer. However, it just continues to ride up every time I move my arms. So I'm always having to pull the sleeves down and then they just go up as soon as I move my arm again. 
So that's probably the thing that annoys me the most about this pattern. And I really, really wish that I had stopped my lifeline a little longer. I really do need about two inches longer before doing the lace section. Um, and this isn't necessarily a plus size thing. This is actually something that I've seen with many other um, examples of knitters who have made this exact dress. Um, even some who have done the smaller sizes also have sleeves that are too short. Um, I think there's only been one or two that I've seen that have sleeves that actually end at the wrist and stay at the wrist. Um, so I do have more yarn. I could go back and do this again. But do I want to? Not really, because I then have to knit this lace all over again. And it's not, it's not significantly challenging lace. Um, it's just very attention needing lace. Any lace chart is going to need a lot of attention. Um, and I find that I really struggle with doing lace charts and I very much don't like doing lace charts. Um, I didn't mind it as much on the sleeves, but it was not fun doing it on the hem, which is several hundred stitches. And you don't know that you have missed a yarn over until you're two rows on. That's fun. Anyway. <laughs> so I probably won't remake the sleeves to make them a bit longer. I'll probably just keep doing this, which I do with my sweaters all the time anyway. I just pull it down over my hands and I just sort of cozy it up like this. I'm a very big fan of like putting my sleeves over my hands with my sweaters. I do that all the time. <laughs> Actually, that's something that my mom commented on when I showed her my first podcast episode, which was about the Radiate Pullover by Hohi Locatelli. And I showed it to mom and mom said, why do you keep pulling your sweater over your hands? Is that like the design or something? And I said, no, I just do that all the time. That's just, that's just me. She thought it was strange. Um, anyway, if you also think it's strange, I'm sorry. That's what I do. Um, but yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do whenever it just keeps riding up like this. I'll just keep pulling it down. I will say though, I'm always on the lookout for a stretchy cuff ending. I-cord is pretty good. Um, I was actually worried that my I-cord cuffs would be tight and I wouldn't be able to, you know, push my sleeves up in order to wash my hands or anything like that. But they're nice and stretchy. I was very excited about that. I've never done an I-cord cuff before. Actually, no, that's a lie. I have done an I-cord cuff before, um, but it was on um, a much bigger cuff, so I didn't have to worry about my cuffs being small, uh, unlike this one, which, well, they do look kind of loose, but they are supposed to be, um, supposed to be like a balloon sleeve that then comes in tight at the wrist. Uh, moving right along, I absolutely love the fit of this dress, minus the sleeves. I find that it fits my body really, really nicely. Um, it is an elasticized waist, so um, it does stay pretty snug. It is a dress, so the weight of the skirt does pull that down a bit, but I find that if I tighten my elastic tight enough, it doesn't. And it's not, you know, extremely tight that I can't move or get it over my body. It's completely fine. So moving on to the skirt. I was shocked at how short it took me to knit the body of the skirt because I'm usually one of those people that's stuck on body island. I know people talk about sleeve island all the time. I get stuck on body island because I do my sleeves first and then I'm just stuck doing these really big circumferences of stockinette and I just think this is taking forever and usually it does. This time it didn't. I was really surprised. I think I did the stockinette section of the skirt in a week or less, I would say a maximum of a week, but probably less because at first it was taking a little bit of time and then I realized I just needed to have the right background viewing to really bash out most of the skirt. Um, 
So I actually borrowed from the library the first season of Home Fires, which is about the Women's Institute in the UK during World War II. And it was my first time watching it. Absolutely loved it. Got season two, watched it as soon as I could. Also excellent, but season one is a little bit better. Um, yeah, and I binged all six of the episodes in one evening and I bashed out most of the stockinette skirt. So that's all I needed to really get me going on the skirt. And then that brought me down to the lace panel on the skirt, which I'm just realizing now you can't see from that angle. It's absolutely stunning. I'm shocked that I did not make any mistakes because I fully expected to make mistakes. Um, but I learned some valuable lessons while making the knitted panel on this skirt. I learned how to fix a yarn over that's missing two rows below the row that you're on. <laughs> Fortunately for me, the mistakes that I made tended to be near the end of the round. So it's on the back of the skirt anyway. So if I did flub something or if my yarn overs that I picked up later on don't look quite as crisp and neat as the regular ones that I did at the time, it's fine. It's in the back. You probably won't even see them. Um, so that was a challenge doing the lace panel over several hundred stitches. Um, what bothered me the most about it was that it stressed me out because whenever I do lace work, I'm always stressed about when I get to the end of the row, am I gonna have the right number of stitches left? Because I've had a few experiences doing lace work charts where I've had things not match up at the end, my stitch count is off. And that is always down to missing a yarn over because generally speaking, you're always gonna remember to knit, you're always gonna remember to uh, knit two together or SSK or whatever decrease you're doing to start the angles of the lace. Um, but it's the yarn overs that are the easiest thing to forget. At least for me, it might be different for somebody else. And as I learned, twice, I missed a yarn over. Um, so that was unfortunate, but I do feel very proud of myself that I was able to really just teach myself by trying it um, about how to put in a yarn over that I'd forgotten to put in at the time. And it didn't look too bad. I was really impressed. Um, so that is something that I learned about myself while making this dress and that's not, that's a skill that I can take forward into the next project that I work on um, or the next lace work project that I make. However, I will tell you in my queue on Ravelry, any project that has lace has now been pushed to the bottom of the queue because I need a break from lace. It's It takes a lot of brain power for me and I just find that it can be very stressful to follow lace charts. So I'm going to take a break for a while, work on some different stuff, do some stockinette, maybe some cables, who knows. But overall, I am quite happy with my Augustine's number 21 dress. The question that I always ask myself, will I make it again? I think you can already tell the answer to that. Oh. It's really beautiful. It's really comfortable. I'm super excited to have had it work out knowing that there was no other plus size examples out there. Um, but it was the lakes work charts that did it for me. I just, I can't do that again. Um, I could see myself doing the Augustine's dress that doesn't have the lace cuffs and the lace hem on the skirt. I think that's her um, Augustine's number 11 dress because I was really surprised at how quickly this knitted up. And I really, really enjoy um, having knitted dresses. I think they're a great staple, especially for here in Canada where it can get quite cold. And if I'm going into work, it's a great stylish piece to wear that also keeps you really nice and warm without being, you know, a thick, cozy sweater, which I feel as nice as sweaters can be, sometimes they just look a little more casual versus a knitted dress. I feel a knitted dress is just a very easy way to elevate your hand knit wardrobe. 
So I can definitely see myself making more knitted dresses in the future, um, but not ones with lace work, I don't think. <laughs> or if they have lace, minimal lace. Um, I'm actually surprised at how little yarn this took too, but that's also down to the loose gauge. Um, I calculated it and I used seven balls, um, so 700 grams, I should say, of this yarn is, oh my gosh, I didn't even mention that at the beginning. Um, this is knit using Premier Yarns Downton Abbey Matthew, which is a tweed worsted yarn that is 80% um, acrylic, 20% wool. And um, I used 700 yards, sorry, I used 700 grams of this yarn, uh, which equaled out to, it was like 1400 and a bit um, yards of yarn. So I've used 1400 yards of yarn in sweaters before. Um, so I am quite excited that I can make a knitted dress with only that much yarn being a plus size person. So I am very surprised at how little yarn this took. So the next time that I can get some yarn on sale or if I feel like tacking on a bit of extra yarn, I might make myself another dress. Um, because they are very comfortable. They're very useful for work. They're useful for staying warm in the winter. And you know, this feminine style is just really pretty. And I really, really like how it looks on me. Um, and I can foresee myself getting a lot of wear out of this dress, despite the little things that kind of annoy me about how it ended up working out. But yeah, that is my review of the Augustine's number 21 sweater dress. Before I move on to my books of the episode, that's right, I said books. Um, one of the uh, comments that I got on either my last video or the video before that, I'm not entirely sure which one, I think it was my last video. I had a lot of lovely commenters say that they would be just as happy to see me put out content even if I don't have a finished product to talk about. So that's sort of like putting a little nugget into my brain. That's because I'm working on a blanket this year, as I mentioned in my bonus episode. I'm working on the Habitation Throw and I figured it would be kind of neat to show the progress of my blanket in some of my podcast episodes because some of my viewers said that they would still want to watch content even if I don't have a finished item. So without further ado, let me show you my second item. So this is uh, a yarn bag that I've made myself. I think I showed it off in another video. And I'm gonna show you my first month's progress on my Habitation Throw. So I talked about in the video that I'm using um, the Harry Potter Spells Advent Calendar from Goosey Fibers. Um, important note, I do not support JK Rowling's views or opinions. Um, just wanna put that out there. I just like Harry Potter, do not support JK Rowling. Um, but I have this yarn and I really wanted to use it. And the only thing that I could think of to use all of the yarn together was a throw. And I'm, I have 24 skeins because it was an advent. So I'm doing two skeins a month so that I can get the whole blanket done within a year. And I think that's a pretty, pretty solid um, plan of attack. And I'm recording this on January 30th. I have officially finished my two colors for January. So I'm on track. It's only the first month, but I'm happy to be on track even if it's just this early. So here is the first month and first two skeins. Oops, I got a little string there of my Habitation Throw. So if you do have the Harry Potter Spells Advent, I have started with Wingardium Leviosa and I have gone on to Stupefy. So those are the first two colors that are the HP spells. And my intent with this was to fade it, but I think I misplaced some of my fade colors in the wrong order because I'll show you what 
my next color looks like. So you can see that I've probably mixed up my fade a bit. Oops, not that one. I have both of my February colors in my bag already. This is color three, which is Silencio. And it kind of makes Stupefy look like it's in the wrong place. I probably should have started with Stupefy. Or I should have just put Wingardium Leviosa in a totally different spot. But it's already done. I don't particularly want to start over, especially because I'm trying to keep on my, my path of two colors a month. Um, and plus, it's just going to be a blanket that we use on the couch. I, I don't think it's going to matter that it's not a perfect fade. It's not going to matter to me. It's not going to matter to my fiance. It's definitely not going to matter to the dog who's probably going to be all over it, unfortunately. I'll try and keep it away from him, but you never know with Rooster. So I have started it. I'm very happy with it so far. I have made a couple boo-boos already. Um, but like I said, it's a blanket for when we're laying on the couch and we just want a cozy layer. So I'm not going to go back and fix them. But there's the progress of my habitation throw. It is um, a reversible pattern. It's just garter stitch. So I have a stitch marker on this side to tell me that this is the right side because you have to do something different on right side rows versus wrong side rows for certain uh, rows. So I just have the stitch marker there to remind me. Uh, but I'm very happy with it so far. It's an easy project to just pick up and work on while watching TV or um, Doyle and I were away over the past couple of days. So I was just picking it up um, while we were spending time in a cozy cabin. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a great project to just have in my back pocket, work on, on a row here and there. Obviously when I get closer to the middle and my rows are longer than I can fit in a video, um, then it might not be as fun of a just pick up and knit kind of project. Um, by that time, I think one row might feel like it takes two days, but I'm very excited about how that project is going to work out. I'm very excited about having a blanket by the end of the year and sticking to my goal of using up my advent yarns finally. Um, this is also teaching me that as enticing as advent yarns are, they really aren't for me. They're not something that I can find a use for. I think it's different for somebody who knits socks because you can always use advent yarns for heels and toes in your socks and cuffs if you want some, um, some contrasting colors. But I don't knit socks and it's kind of hard to put mini skeins together to make a larger project such as a sweater because because that's was that was my first intention with this was to have a faded sweater but it was just too much math to deal with matching up the stripe on the body and the arms because you have to do like some calculations to make sure that you don't run out of yarn between the body and sleeve one and sleeve two so it's just a throw that goes from corner to corner is much easier to handle. And now onto my books of the episode. I have two books for you this time. It's been a while since I've had two books. The first one is Jam Busters, which is the story of the Women's Institute during the Second World War. So this is the book that the show Home Fires is based on, like I was just talking about earlier. I absolutely loved Home Fires. I binged both seasons. I was very, very happy to have found um, a period drama that I hadn't already seen. Uh, I've watched many. Um, and when I found it, it was based on a book. I went and grabbed the book from my library. Um, I love, like I've mentioned in previous episodes, nonfiction stories about regular people doing extraordinary things. And this is definitely one of those types of books. I can't tell you too much about it because I'm only on the first chapter. Um, I didn't take this book away with me when Doyle and I went away for the past couple of days, so I only had the chance to start it last night. Um, but so far, I really like the writing style. Um, Julie Summers is very much an anecdotal style nonfiction writer, so 
she's telling stories of people in order to tell the history. And that's always an enjoyable thing to read. So um, if you are at all interested in the history of the women's institutes during the Second World War, if you are interested in women's history, um, especially rural women, women who lived in the countryside, um, this is probably going to be a book that you'll enjoy. But like I said, I can't tell you too much about it because I'm so early on in the book. Um, but I will say the title Jam Busters, it refers to the fact that the Women's Institute during the Second World War collectively made, I think it was 14 million pounds of jam um, in order to fill the larders of fellow British men and women during the Second World War. So that's where the title comes from. And I just think that's really cute. Um, also, who doesn't love jam, right? And now for my second book. This one I can tell you a little bit more about because I'm about 100 pages in. I told you I'd come back to it. I've got a fantasy book again. And I'm very excited about this one because this is a book that Doyle got me for Christmas. Um, it's called The High Mountain Court by A.K. Mulford. And the story is kind of a mix of Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses, and Serpent and Dove, um, because there is a fae prince and a witch. And the story is basically sort of um, a journey to find a relic, because there is one kingdom that has sort of become dominant over the other four kingdoms in this world, and the main characters, um, Hale is the Fey Prince and Remy is the witch. Are from they're from kingdoms that uh, Remy's kingdom has actually been destroyed by the king in the north, and Hale's kingdom could potentially be destroyed in the future. So he's called on Remy to help him find a relic that will save them from destruction by the king in the north. And there's some really great characters in this book. Um, some really nice side characters, uh, really good character development, really great plot. It's a very fast paced plot. So there's always one event after another. And I'm at a point right now where they're about to, they've just reached a town where they have to do a deceit. And it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out. But I'm very much liking it. Um, it it's not quite as polished as Akatar, but it's a great story. Um, it is a trilogy and the other two books have both been written, but the third book doesn't come out until April of this year. So I'm hoping that if I get to the end of this one and I really, really like it, I'll go buy the second one. And then maybe by the time I get around to reading the second book, the third one will be ready and I can get that one if I enjoy the second book. So very excited about that. Excited about the world. Um, I'm about 100 pages in, so I've got quite a good feel for what it's going to be like. Um, the only thing I'm not super stoked about is that it's not a very well-drawn map. I'm one of those people that I absolutely love maps and books, and this one was kind of a letdown. So that's too bad, but I'm not reading the book for just the map, so... There's a lot more to the story than just that. Um, but yeah, so far, so good. I uh, can't give my final verdict yet, of course, because still only about 100 pages in. That's about maybe a quarter of the story. That's a little, maybe a third of, it's about a third of the story. It's not a very long book, but really great read. It hooked me from the very first chapter. So love that. Um, and excited to see what happens to the characters next. And that is it for this episode of the Knitted by Whitney podcast. Just another reminder, I have my first ever giveaway running in this episode. All you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on this video for a chance to win a copy of the School Run Headband Pattern by the lovely Laura of Penrose Knits and one skein of Fleece Artist Front Country DK yarn in the color Nova Scotia, which is a beautiful blend of blues and greens. 
I should mention that this giveaway is open internationally. Um, anybody can uh, can make a comment and have a chance to win the giveaway. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, the further you live away from me, the longer it will take you to receive the yarn. But the pattern is a digital pattern, so you will get it pretty quickly. And thank you all for watching. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining me and I hope you stick around for more episodes. If you're returning, if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate your support and getting to connect with so many of you over here on YouTube. Thank you again so much to Laura of Penrose Knits for the giveaway pattern and I guess there's not much else to say except everyone take care, good luck in the giveaway, and 